Hey, it's JD with Impulsive and the Damn the Man Punk Show, you know, all that stuff. And today we have a Vespertine Rising, right? You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Sergio from a Vespertine Rising. How are you guys doing? We are great. We are great. So we premiered uh, your song Atlas a couple awesome. of weeks ago. We have it coming up on an encore uh, either this week or next week. And we're really curious about your music. Like, uh, how like how did this come about? It came about in 2007, believe it or not. But for the longest time, it was just me doing just goofy, like, uh, coffee shop impromptus and just working on my own stuff. I didn't really have the technology that I do have now. So a lot of it was just doing it by myself, just really just playing acoustic guitar going around. So it wasn't that serious. So like about six or seven years about of doing that. And then, you know, I finally invested, got a computer and started doing all my stuff. And really, um, you know, after life kind of happened there for a little bit, um, I started in January of this year. And, you know, I just did one of these, like, everybody does like a new year's thing. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to do this, do this. Well, I reinvested in myself. So I went and bought all the stuff needed to make a home studio and kind of grew from that. And then I just started to like, I reached out to a distributor, got a distributor. And then, um, you know, it just kind of fell into place after that. And, um, I just started, you know, since I didn't, I hadn't recorded stuff in like almost 10 years, I came out with two records and an EP on the matter of eight months, which is crazy, but it's also been really great because the reception of it has been amazing. So that's super cool. I mean, we like what we've heard and we'd like more stuff because we'll play and it's pretty cool. But for me, instrumentals almost go in a different category for me. And the reason why is, I don't know if you remember, did you ever see the Virgin suicides? I did. Okay. So that song high school lover, mm -hmm. it kind of, it's an instrumental like that, but it's, it, it, it drags you with it. You know what I mean? And so when we heard uh, Atlas, it was the same situation. Is that what you go for? Is that the type of music you want to make? Well, number one, thank you for the compliment because I know exactly what you're going through with that. Um, so with my music, it's just been crazy because um, how I kind of do this is since there's no vocals, I like to tell the story within the song. So the guitars and the bass and the drums and everything mixed together ends up being the voice of the song and it tells the story. So like Atlas, yeah, it... I love being able to take you with me. Um, as I was describing to some friends, you know, my music is supposed to be listened to as, you know, when I'm creating it, I'm seeing things. I use visuals around the studio to like kind of inspire me while I'm making the song. And then when you listen to that song, I want it to transport you to somewhere. I know that sounds kind of super deep, but when I listen to it, like even listening to my own music, I'm like, okay, what was I thinking this day? And then like I can just close my eyes and I go to some places and I'm hoping that People interpret it the same way on their end. It's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, I do. And that's what kind of why I brought up the High School Lover song. Because um, I remember seeing that movie and it was just different. Mm -hmm. And so every time I hear that song, it's like, oh, yeah. Like, you remember the feeling, you know. And that's kind of what your music does is it brings you to that point where you first heard it. And mm -hmm. kind of that feeling. And it's super cool like that. Do you think uh like is this all is this it for you is this the type of stuff you want to do or um are you still kind of transforming okay so i'm definitely transforming sorry i had a message i'm turning my phone off but um i definitely am transforming because i'm i'm kind of in a genre that's not been really touched i feel like i mean there's amazing bands that do instrumentals like i built the sky um let's see here uh god is an astronaut explosions in the sky and um you know i don't want to be just set in one place because you know it's been difficult to kind of push my music out there because people are like okay where's the where's the lyrics where's the songs where's the i mean where's the vocals at so it's really i'm i kind of started in a challenge which i wanted because i do sing i can sing i do i that's what i was doing for about 15 years with ghostwriting for people i was writing songs i was singing them it's just i wanted to get somewhere to where my music sound nothing like anybody's ever heard. And it's, you know, you hear these people like 20, 30 years later, like these bands are like, well, when we came into it, people thought we were crazy. You know, this had never been heard before. You know, when punk rock came and when synthwave came and when U2 and Coldplay and Blink came, you know, all these different 
huge bands now but when they started out people thought they were a joke or they were like dude what what's the point like what were you trying to say so with my music i know that i'm in this little niche of there's not a lot of bands that really even sound like me even instrumental bands sound like me because like my music just sounds something different i don't know how to describe it yet but i know that i'm going somewhere in uncharted territory but that gives me literally all the keys to the kingdom because i can do whatever i want sound whatever i want want and i can take my songs in any direction and that kind of freedom is so rare so i'm like really trying to hold on to it it's super cool and i know that so everybody sort of has a little bit of high school left in them right mm -hmm. and there's that high school thing where if you see somebody listening to something you're not going to listen to it so yeah. you have to have make somebody listen to it and that's why i liked playing it on uh tomorrow's rock legends mm -hmm. because you just drop it in you know if you just drop it in front of somebody and they listen to it they don't have any preconceived notions Absolutely. and that's what's cool about it because your music is cool and we like hearing it and i think when you just play it and people just hear it they're like oh yeah this is cool who's this again yeah yeah and um that's that's really like what i've been getting from people that you know go on to my instagram page or go on to my soundcloud itunes spotify they're just like whoa what is this and i like that aha uh -huh moment being like okay because you know even when i first started recording this stuff like just being the musician making it hearing it through the headphones for the first time I'm like i think i got something here but i'm like what is this so i i, I love the fact that you know i'm not well known yet so that it's not like oh a vespertine rising yeah wait a second what's this new song that sounds nothing like it you know these fans get really brutal nowadays because everything's at their fingertips it's so easy like um i was watching this documentary where um this guy was talking about music like you spend these years months making a song making a record and at the end of the day a cup of coffee costs more than your song and that's so it's it's really easy to for these people to get really cynical about it so you know i try to keep in mind try to you know what is not necessarily what do they want to hear it's just like what is going to be the next step in the evolution of this you know, do I want to stay comfortable and make a lot of these songs that sound alike, or do I just go completely departure and, you know, just make, I, I want something like, if I'm the person listening, I want to be like, whoa, what was that? Play that back. So with Atlas, you know, Atlas is my newest song, but I also have like 28 other songs. And so what's been great about Atlas has been such a flagship because people are now like, okay, now what does he have? I've heard this. Holy cow, wait, you have two other records? Let's listen to that. So that's really cool because it opens doors and it's been opening cool. doors. And what's funny is you kind of touched on the way kids are today. You know, I have a kid and he's um, he's older, he's 17. Mm -hmm. But I, everybody always says their attention spans aren't very long. Mm -hmm. And I'm familiar with, I'm not familiar with making music. I'm not an artist in any way. Uh, I like music, but I'm familiar with telling a story. And that's kind of what artists do with their songs. And if you watch, today kids really do have a short attention span mm -hmm. and what they end up doing is you'll give them a three four minute song and they'll listen to maybe five seconds of it they'll skip here 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 and here and you're like you're you're skipping over all the parts what yeah you absolutely and you know so i think it was a blessing to me i'm very adhd so even coming up before i was able to get to a platform where i'm at now you know through the years of struggling um just making my music but not getting out there like nobody i wasn't doing anything I kind of, that's what I incorporate with me as being a musician. Cause I'm like, I remember being just the kid that would go to the store and listen, you know, back with CDs, geez, old. But you know, when you listen to a CD, it would give you like maybe a 20 second preview of each song. And so I'm like, I need to make something that clicks immediately. It's, Cause with my music, I don't have all this other stuff to kind of, you know, protect it. I don't have the vocals. I don't have the words. I don't have, how the voice sounds like that doesn't catch the listener immediately so i'm like okay what what do i have to work with here well i have really good guitars that can harmonize but it has to punch and it has to catch you right immediately and draw you in or i've lost them so there's always that challenge but then i also incorporate my artwork with so that's just as important as my songs so when you see my artwork it's these really um grandiose esoteric looking things i'm really into 
um, you know, symbolism and all this ancient stuff. So like pyramids and stuff like that gets me really like interested. So what's been really cool is the response is like, they're like, well, we see your artwork. We're like, well, shit, I wonder what that sounds like because that looks awesome. Wonder what music comes from that. And so like, I, I've been kind of using that marketing wise, like, if it's going to be an awesome song, I'm going to make it a single. We got to have a freaking awesome artwork and then, you know, just just sell the shit out of it, basically. Yeah. Well, if you send us something, uh, some of your artwork, we'll put it on with this interview. Absolutely. So yeah. Can kind of put them both and, together. Um, yeah. Like with my new song, Valley of the Sun, which um, I did send to Leah, but I don't know if you guys have played yet. Um, yet again, it's uh, this next record that I'm doing is it's um, kind of the story that's being told is you know redemption and the future and i'm i'm really excited i i can't really talk too much about it but it's it's gonna be it's gonna blow the water out of everything i've ever done before it's really good so i'm excited that's awesome so now i'm getting a sense of uh the sky god is an astronaut you mm -hmm. know um uh, so what do you mean what where are okay. you going so those so the so the band God is an astronaut. Um, it's just like um, those are the band names, but um, you know I really like the idea of which is why um, I big news is I'm actually working with a company overseas that's going to be doing music videos for me, and that's going to be a whole nother realm that I'm going to be able to dive into as representation of my music. So it's going to be landscape. So you're asking, you know, the God is an astronaut. What's the theme behind that? So with my music, it's all about you know just kind of floating off the ground, just flying. I love the music that makes you feel like you're flying. Very crescendo and grandiose 80s type of feel, but it's for our new generation. So I like the idea of, you know, the essence of, you know, you literally jump off a cliff imaginary and it makes you fly. The music lifts you up. It's uplifting. It's positive. You know, I, a lot of these songs that I writ was when I was going through like the worst times I was, I've ever gone through in my life, which you hear a lot of artists say, I get it, but you know, they want to write these pieces that are hopeful for human connection. And just a lot of my themes are, you know, escapism, you know, the landscapes, being able to see something better than yourself. So it's, there's a lot of deep diving into my stuff. But then again, there's a lot of elements where it's just like, I just want like you to be able to be wherever you're at, just rock the fuck out and, you know, be comfortable in your own skin listening to shit kind of like how music did for me you know i want to do that for somebody else that's cool and i think that's the best that's the best compliment from uh music that people get is just the straight up look i turned on your record and it made me feel you know what i mean i just exactly I it that's I it. that's literally the number one thing i'm not i'm not out for like a year from now being you know verified being popular on mainstream, anything like that. I'm I'm completely happy if I'm in the same place where I'm at now, or I'm, you know, marketing stuff, making clothes for people who, you know, want a Vespertine Rising clothing, um, you know, putting out music daily, monthly, yearly, and just touching even just the one person, you know, and I love the idea that, you know, my music now that it's on a platform, you know, when I'm 60, 70 years old, I can look back and listen to this portion of my life and being like, wow, this is awesome. And you know, my kids will be able to listen to it. I love that kind of idea too. being able to pass it on generational music. I like that. That's super cool. That's super cool. But I want to move away from the music a little bit and yeah. talk about your symbolism and your art. Mm -hmm. Right. So where does it come from? Why symbolism, why pyramids, so, why the dollar bill, man? I uh, know. Oh, geez. So, um, I love, symbolism sacred geometry which is right behind me that's that's the logo for my my band and um i just have always loved the idea of power three you know triads um pyramids all that kind of stuff but then um it also goes back into my my family history you know um i have some masons in my family and uh i'm actually mayan indian so i have a lot of ancestral stuff that i've dug deep into and then a part of me is a huge nerd that goes into, you know, aliens and conspiracies. And I love the facts of like, you know, where did this come from? Where did we come from? Well, it says that, you know, this book says this, but that's, that's not true because then this happened and we've only discovered 20% of our oceans. And then I, I, I just love the other side of me is just so into like true crime conspiracies, aliens, which, and now that the government is coming forth with all the UAP stuff, I'm like, 
I, uh, I knew about this like years ago. And um, it also helps that my brother is in the ex-military. So like, there's just a lot of goofy stuff that doesn't have, we don't have enough time for, but I could off the air be like, dude, you got two hours. I, I got you and Tom DeLong, huh? Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. So Angels and Airwaves and Blink was a huge, huge influence on me. And yeah, Mr. DeLong definitely helped me along my journey of, because I've been doing this. I'm, believe it or not, I'm 37. I'm feeling kind of old, but I've been looking up this stuff since I was like 12, 13, when everybody was like, dude, why are you doing that? You're so weird. And now that the stuff's coming out, I'm like, told you so, told you so. And it's, it's hilarious because I do have like a certain group of people that I can literally just, hey, you got an hour on board. You want to talk about some stuff? Oh, yeah. Well, I got this new stuff. And, this, and so, see, totally off subject, but I could talk about it's it. Cool. It's but cool. But yeah, but that, yeah, that's a lot of like, I love to incorporate symbolism, um, you know, Roman numerals, just different like esoteric meanings behind the music. I just, I've always thought that was cool because like, you know, they, they have these bands like Coheed and Cambria, you know. Angels and Airwaves, um, even U2, even Coldplay, like they are, yes, they have the music and they have, you know, you know the band, but then when you look at their records, you know, there's symbolism, there's the flower of life, and then there's these Freemason symbols, and there's the cross keys, and I'm like, okay, wow, why do they have this stuff? And then you kind of dive into it, and it's like, whoa, there's this whole different meaning. Even 30 Seconds to Mars has the same thing. So it's all these bands that I, I looked up to growing up, and I'm like, how could I incorporate it into my music to make it just a little bit deeper? Once fans actually get the, or like, not even fans, just people listening to it are like, okay, cool. Well, oh, cool. His music's really cool too. But then like, okay, what do those symbols mean? Oh, that's what they mean? Holy shit. So this is all wrapped up. So it's, it's I don't know. It was kind of a fun thing to start off with, but now I'm like, I'm incorporating and people are not just you. People are asking me all the time and I'm like, cool, I'm engaging. It's, it's, it's starting a rhetoric. So I kind of like it. Speaking of which, so like it's on my jacket too. Oh, that's and, cool. Uh, that's what I'm hoping to do is um, merchandise. I've been talking to people about this for a while. I have a company that's going to work with me. It's just getting the numbers right and then getting the prototypes to where it's cost effective and I could really just, you know, be able to mass produce and take it out to the, the public. But trust me, people are really wanting it. Like I have, you guys need to send me your address. I have stickers if you guys want some. I have those too. So. That's cool. And then when you get um, when you get the merchandising up, we'll link it to our account. So that would be awesome. There. I appreciate that. Or to our website. But uh, so yeah. So I ask about that because uh, I've seen Angels and Airwaves, and they have sort of a sort of a Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind sort of light show that goes with. Oh it. yeah, dude. Oh man. And that's like people have always asked me about. Oh, you can do this live. I would love to do this music live. You know how cool like how cool would this be live right it would sound ridiculous it'd be so cool to like and i would totally do the lasers and everything my dilemma is i have to go out there and teach five or six different people each every part of my song and that's just like i don't know if i have the patience for that. <laughs> but i do have some musicians local that are daily that are asking me to like hey you want to jam you want to try to do this so it might happen it might happen in the next year or so I have two different bands that are are willing to merge into one thing with me. So that's that's actually the latest news. Not many people know about that. So that's exciting. And then the other thing is is you know these music videos. In the meantime, I'm gonna start putting visual representations of my music with esoteric themes. So I'm excited about that. That's super cool. That's super cool. So one thing that I always ask people. Um, in our interviews, I always ask, what are you listening to right now? So what's on your phone, What you know, whatever you listen to? Mm, okay, so right now, I like, okay, so that's a good question because I always want to push myself and get inspirations to, to a point. Um, Taking Back Sunday is coming out with a new record, which I didn't think I'd ever say that band in a sentence ever again, but it's all the original dudes. Um, They have this song called Sold that I've been really listening to lately. It's really uplifting. But the main stuff that I've been listening to is a band called Gates. Not many people know about them, but um, they're kind of, um, I'm trying to think of post, I guess post rock, but they have really flying crescendo songs with, with lyrics too. But um, I'll send you guys a link to them, but they're awesome. They are so, it's kind of just like, oh, the music that's like, I don't know the feelings you get you just want to stand up and be triumphant 
So those are the main things I'm listening to right now. But then I, I, I recycle a lot of the same stuff. Like I, I'm really excited about Blink's new record. Um, 30 Seconds to Mars is coming out with a new record. So I've been listening to that. Um, but being selfish, I've been kind of like over listening my own stuff right now because I'm getting to a transition point where it's really going to be bigger here soon. So I'm like, I'm, I'm nitpicking songs now because I'm, I've been talking to a company that wants to mix and remix and master some of them. So I'm trying to find the right stuff to do. So I'm kind That's of immersed in my cool. own work now too. That's awesome. I'm super glad that everything seems to be coming together. And I'm really glad that we came together at just Dude, the right time. And, and, and you were telling me the other day that, you know, hundreds of thousands of people listen to you guys and that's that blew me away that they um that that many people heard atlas because you know like a lot of these people are like well i put out a single this record isn't going to be out till probably july next year but oh man i'm so excited to send you guys some new songs because i can only just go up from here like i'm so excited at that point for well, that point. I can tell you you're going to be on the encore if you send us nice. i'll go through what we have send us anything else that you have I like to showcase bands on the encore after we've showcased them on the show. Oh. So you'll yeah, be yeah, you have you have two songs right now. You have um Valley of the Sun and Atlas, but I'm gonna send you another one that like everybody was like, you should have done the music review for this one. So I might have to do it, but it's called The Time Traveler. And see, that was another part of my my thing with the whole symbolism and everything. I want song names. That's how I start off even doing this stuff, is I start with the song name and then I, I'm like, okay, what does that if I heard that, what would I want to hear? So the time traveler, like, so I have these really cool epic song names because the songs have to be epic too. So, yeah, that song is ridiculous. It was the last song that I did for the um, my latest record, "Oceans Made of Glass," and it's it's really. I, I mean, I, I get stoked off it. So I'm hoping that people do too. So I'll send you that one as well when we get off here. Cool. So we'll put it on, and then um, I'll tell you that uh, last weekend we had two hundred and eighteen thousand people listening totally. so i'm hoping that it's even more people yeah. this time so we'll get into a wider audience hey you help me and i'm hoping i'm helping you guys yeah for sure for sure and um i was also told off the off the cuff here i was told that uh we were at the same angels and airwaves uh concert i i'm guessing so was it the phoenix one yeah i think was it tempe okay yeah so if it was tempe what, what's the um What's the venue in Tempe? The Marquee? Honestly, I don't remember. Oh, um, well, because we went, okay, so this is like a whole, completely different story, but how my wife and I met is through Angels and Airways. I'm originally from Virginia. And so I was on, Angels and Airways have this thing called a street team. And we did like the marketing for them. When we would go to shows, we interview fans and put it on their page. So this is totally before I finally got into the musician mode again. But so I was like, it's a dork fanboy god but anyways so we would that's how we met we'd go to shows together and yeah i i would fly out to arizona and we went to an angel show i guess the same one that you guys went to because we actually got to meet the band which is bucket list for me because tom and um yeah man that that band is something else but I, everybody that knows me back home are like of course angels and everybody. so i've i've worked on so hard distancing myself from that person that's like yeah because <laughs> i'm like okay dude you're actually getting legit here now you know your music's actually getting noticed you need to be in this mode of work i mean i'm just always going to be like if tom walks up i'm like holy shit but i i know that i have to like kind of like stray away from that a little bit but it's so awesome. then you start playing shows and then you happen to be playing the same show then oh, tom no. walks by and you're like this dude, that will oh, never cool. ever happen and it's so funny because i have I have buddies all over the country. They that started in Virginia. They're in successful bands. And they talk to me about, oh yeah, if you come to our city, well, you can open for us. And I'm like, that. Hopefully that happens. But you know, they're actually some of them are like, you know, been signed to major labels, and they're talking about like, dude, you could be in my place in a couple of years. I'm like, I don't think so. But my goal is just literally is just to do this kind of stuff. You know, this is huge to be able to be interviewed, be able to talk about my music, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity and you guys are awesome. Your, your radio station has really taken off. So that's awesome. We're kind of like in the same trajectory. We're, we're both going. That would be yeah. cool to like, I was telling Leo it'd be cool to like do an interview in a couple of years and we both like really make it and be like, 
remember back when we were kids and like we interviewed that'd be awesome you slowly got to remember us so yeah same when, here. you cool. know when you get big we can go hey man remember yeah right oh i know I've, I've seen those interviews with these bands like oh yeah i remember back in 92 like blah blah, blah and they show like a that would be funny that would be cool though but that's super fun well i appreciate your time today i appreciate really? all your stuff and i'm super stoked to play more of your music here Absolutely. in the following weeks i appreciate it and yes uh be on it look out for the time traveler everybody that's listening i will be sending it to these guys and hopefully i'll get there after to you guys so and then if you want to plug your uh any website or soundcloud or anything yeah of- so um it's it's my band name of vespertine rising look me up on itunes spotify and soundcloud and then um i have two new songs out atlas which these guys have played and then a brand new song which i'm hoping to get into your guys rotation valley of the sun and i am working on a brand new record the name will come out soon and thank you all for supporting me i appreciate it brother thank you thank you